We stand, we stand, we rise, we rise, we carry, we carry our lives. We stand, we stand, we rise, we rise, we carry, we carry our lives. How you doing?
Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side that hath blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land but put forth thy hand now and touch all that hath he will curse thee to that face. What he just said was if you take your hand away from him and let me you know essentially mess with him mess with his life he will turn and he will curse your name to your face. He will turn from you and curse your name. All right. Um, I don't really have time to read all of what Satan does because he really does everything. But um, Job was a very wealthy man. He had a bunch of, you know, back then um, livestock, like how much, how many animals you had, and how many servants you had, and all this stuff that determined your wealth. It wasn't necessarily money, which of course you have to have that stuff to have all the cattle and things. But um, he had all that, and he had a couple of sons and a couple of daughters. And from verse 13 to uh, about 20, about 20, all Satan does is he goes through and he wipes out everything, all of his sheep, all of his everything. He even kills his sons and his daughters. It says that... Um, um, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and fell among the young men, and they were and they are dead. And I only am escaped to tell you who was the servant coming to tell Job. Then Job arose and rent them. Okay, rent means tore. And tore his... Robe. Got it. Um, it says, Then Job arose and tore his robe, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. How many of you have brothers and sisters? Most of you guys. Okay. Think about this. You're sitting in your house, and you're having dinner, and somebody... Okay, how many of you have pets, too? Pets? Anybody? Pet? <laughs> Good for you guys. <laughs> Probably some of your pets are your sisters, which is weird, because you guys are weird. But anyways... Um, <laughs> Think about you sitting in your house, eating supper, and then, I know this is going to sound really awful, and don't take this in an awful way, but your parents come in and say, okay, your favorite pet just died. That would be horrible, right? Wow. 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 Okay. So, I'm pretty sure most of you would be pretty distraught. But... Okay, and then think about somebody else coming in and saying, by the way, your brother and your sister, or your brother, your brother, or whatever, they just got killed in a car accident. Hey. Hey. Stop being horrible. But think about that. Think about that right quick. For a very serious moment, think about it. You're sitting with your family, and somebody has to come in and say, your brother, your sister, or your son, or your daughter, they just they just died in a car wreck. How many of you guys would, the first thing you would do would be to lay down and praise God? This right here just shows Job's tremendous faith in God. And that's really what I was planning on talking about this morning was faith. Because faith is just such an important part of being a Christian and being who you are. Faith is what really drives you forward in your relationship with God. And um, you know, most of us would know the verse, you know, faith without works is dead. Works meaning doing something for God. You can have faith in God all you want. But until you really start working and living for God, pretty much your faith is dead. To have true faith and to really live, live out your faith, you have to have works intermingled or whatever you want to use in there with having faith in God. And I have a verse, and I have to look on my phone to get it because I don't take notes on paper anymore on the 21st century. But um, 
faith is probably one of the most important aspects of Christian life. In my Bible, it's turning very slow. What in the heck am I thinking? I don't really know what I was thinking last night when I was doing this. Um, I know it's in you somewhere, but this is really like one of those awkward silence moments. Where you really just don't have nothing to say because the verse you're looking for is not where you thought it was. Okay, well, the verse I was looking for is, um, oh, no, there it is. It actually is right there. Wow. <laughs> Long week, you guys. Long week. Okay. Amen. Um, and the Lord said, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might taste it. Say unto this sycamine tree, which in translation is mulberry tree, be thou plucked up by the root and thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. What it's saying is, if you have just a little bit of faith, because a mustard seed is not big, like at all, at all. Like, it's probably smaller than like a sesame seed on a hamburger. No joke. But if you have just that much faith in God, that much true faith in God and God's works and God's, you know, just magnificent glory, just that little tiny bit, you can... You can move mountains, you can move mountains, you can move